the Lord. Amen. It is very good to be in His presence. Amen. 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 It is time to receive the word of God. We are in the book of First Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5 verse 9. The Bible says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus is the word of God. So I pray for the word of this evening to bring salvation, healing, deliverance, and breakthrough in your life. So I want you to pray for yourself, pray for the servant of God, so that, may, so that the Lord may use him to bless you this evening. Let's pray. Father, in mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time that we are about to eat from your table, O oh Lord. Lord, we believe that your word, O oh Jehovah, will bless us this evening. Lord, I pray for your servant. Let the anointing of the Lord be upon you. Jesus. Praise the living God. Father, we thank you one more time. Thank you for being here, Father. We are in your glory your tangible and palpable presence that takes in charge our lives and our issues. Thank you, Father, for your presence. And thank you for your servant that we believe you're going to use mighty to bless us, to take us into our destiny. For during this conference, destiny shall be discovered and recovered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Shout for Jesus. Make noise for you. Make noise for you. Make noise, make noise, make noise. As long as I've been with Chantal, I've been with you. <laughs> Praise God. This is not only a friend, it's a brother. Because we went through tough times together. Even the wife, we have been there. So there is one thing I always learn from you, is your faith. Your faith always challenges me. You know, this gentleman, he told us one day we were still here and he said, my man, in December I'm getting married. We we're like, ah, come. We have nothing. He said, me, I'm getting married in December. And you know what happened? In December I got married in this one. That December, without having anything, that faith always teaches me something. Let me not talk too much. Uh, Pastor Jean-Claude Ndagano, he is pastoring the church in Pochesu. Rema Church in Pochesu. So if you are around Pochesu, the church there, he is the one who is the senior pastor of that church, helped by the wife and other uh, leaders. So he did not come alone, he came with his wife, Numa Gigi. Can you please raise up your hand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he also brought the leader of the prayer or intercession department. Imagine. The leader of meditation department and he's not just a simple man he's a doctor Amen. but he decided to pray Amen. you when the lord lift you a little bit up no me i cannot pray me i cannot pray that is for you but this is a doctor who humble himself and go and pray Amen. so he is there you can see how quite he's busy praying Amen. praise god Amen. so when i'm going to ask pastor nagano to come forward we are going to give jesus Round of applause as I'm inviting Pastor Shantou Nagano. So well for me, can you make me 
fixed on now for Jesus Christ. Give our hands of applause for Jesus. Jesus, our hands for Jesus. Jesus, our hands for Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. This moment is yours. Speak to us by the Holy Spirit. Let somebody discover his destiny. Amen. Let destinies that were lost, stolen, be recovered, as your servant said, in Jesus' mighty name. Destiny maker, we call you. We have all our faith in you. That you're going to change somebody's life this evening. That you're going to do something that will remain memorable. Because we are on those days of glory, which are the days to be remembered. We call upon the memory of God to remain on us and in us. That you do tangible things that somebody will keep in the years to come and say, I got this from the days of glory 2023. Oh Lord, things that you have done yesterday, do more again today. Do again tomorrow. Do on Saturday. Do on Sunday. And we promise you to give you all the glory. Let Lord Almighty wonders be our portion. We ask you for miracles. We ask you for miracles and signs in Jesus' mighty name. Anybody who can seek, I declare a healing in Jesus' mighty name. Nobody will leave this place sick. Nobody will leave this place uh, possessed because deliverance is given. Let the word come. Because the Bible says you sent your words and your word set them free. Let everybody at this place be free. I call freedom out of sickness. Freedom from that poverty. Freedom for projects that never been fulfilled. Freedom for destinies that has been destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Give glory to your name and your only name. Only. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And we say amen, amen, amen. Can we clap our hands? There are some Africans here who can make some Mololo, Mololo, some noise for God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We like it when it's a bit noisy. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm so blessed. I'm so humble. I'm so privileged to, to be among you, to be part of. Uh, Days of Glory 2023, Amen. and uh, I'm just blessed to be in this place. I can see that uh, we're going a step ahead from the 2022 one, and uh, there, there's a step ahead because God takes us always from one glory to the other glory. I want to greet you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, and I thank my friend, my dear friend, Roger and uh, Chantal Makani for the inv invitation. I'm here to deliver the word of God, but before I do it, I just want to inform you that uh, my third book is out. I've released this book last month, which was on 21st August, which was my birthday. I was turning 50. I turned 50 on 21st August, and I delivered the book. I believe you. Now, now you didn't clap your hand properly. Can you clap your hand for Jesus? Now, everybody at BBC who says that you want to offer me a gift for my 50th birthday, the book is 150. You're going to add 50 rent for the 50th birthday. You buy it at 200 rent. Say amen. Wabona. 
I say amen. amen. At the end of the service, to buy the book. You are buy today, you buy tomorrow, you buy Saturday, you buy Sunday. I will be here all those days besides Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's now go to the book. I have watched very carefully the service of yesterday. And when I finished to watch the service, I went to pray. I prayed because I felt like I was part of the service of yesterday. And I didn't want to be coming today like somebody who comes from a, an outside atmosphere and bring here. I'm already inside from the beginning. And yesterday, Pastor Makani spoke to us about destiny. He defined destiny. And I want to remind you that destiny, if you look in your dictionary, it says events that will necessarily happen to a particular person or to a thing in the future. And usually the dictionary says a future that someone will have. Now, the hidden power is believed to be controlled by a supernatural power. Now, this is the dictionary. For us, not children of God, we know where is that supernatural power coming from. Because there is somebody who has created heaven and earth, who speaks and says things that happen. Yes. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Destiny often suggests a future that includes something great and important. That's why the enemy fights, combats, opposes himself to destiny. And yesterday, Pastor Makani was telling you us here that the devil is not our friend. John chapter 10, verse 10, that was read yesterday. And I, I like the way King James says it. King James says, the devil cometh except two. Or he cometh only two. And they mention three things. To steal, destroy and to kill. It comes in your life to destroy what God has planned for you. It comes to kill what God has planned for you. It comes to steal what God has planned for you. And yesterday we've been told that God has good plans for us. But why we don't reach to all the good plans? Because somewhere, somehow, that devil comes. But, but, but. And that's where the life becomes so beautiful to live. In Christ, because Christ came and he said he came for you and I to have life. But he says, life in abundance. Listen to me. If the devil comes abundantly to destroy what God has done, Jesus has come not to less abundantly, but to super abundantly give you something greater than the devil cannot take. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've learned something from God. It was one day on 17 July 2019. I was bitten by a dog called Bulldog, or uh, Pitbull, bitten, and uh, a part of my finger has been cut. I went to a house to visit one sister of the church, Maki, she was turning 66, she works in our kitchen, and it was Sunday afternoon, I went to deliver a cake to her. And with a good intention of delivering a cake, I ended up at Medicine Ochefso. Because a dog attacked me. But listen to me, there were four dogs, one pit bull and three labrados. They've attacked me. Because a day before that, Friday, 
God revealed to me or revealed to three people, my young sister in Paris, my young brother in Johannesburg, and to myself, that my hand was cut. Because the devil was trying to destroy my destiny. He knows that as a medical doctor, I use my head to do operations. And once your hand is cut, they say you live out of insurance. Because you become a disciple. And the, the devil attacked me in that house. The pit bull attacked me. And my hand was in the mouth of the pit bull. I pulled it out. A part of the finger was gone. Now listen, when it happened, immediately, without panicking, something happened. The three Labrados who were attacking me with the pit bull, the four of them, the three immediately turned to create a wall of separation between me and the pit bull. And I'm talking to you a story like in, in a movie. And my last born, my daughter Beryl was in the car, looking at the sea. And suddenly the three Labradors protected me. I went in the car, I sat in the car. One of the Labrador, a very small one, attacked the big pit bull. Went on the neck of the pit bull. It became like a very true pit bull. Martin was pulling the Labrador, but no strength to take the small Labrador out. And the pit bull was killed there on the scene. I'm saying killed, died. A big pit bull killed by a small Labrador. Let me explain to you something. In your way of destiny, if you have enemies, your enemies must know that your defender is bigger than your enemy. I repeat, somebody can touch me. I say, in your journey to your destiny, you're going to meet enemies. But enemies, they just confirm that you have a God who is your destiny maker, who is taking you to destination, and they try to stop you to reach your destination. But God works with angels. God works with an army to protect everybody who is called to reach a destiny. If the devil tries, he will meet the God of my life who has met me when I was still a student and I called him Jehovah Banajila, the one who opens eyes when he wills. Now, the pit bull dies there. I enter in the car. Matthew was behind me. Pastor, I'm sorry. You know, Pastor, I'm sorry. Matthew, it's okay. Then I arrived at the hospital. My wife took me to the hospital. Matthew sent me a message. He said, Pastor, you know you are a true man of God. You are a true man of God. I'm 66 years old. I've always had dogs. A Labrador never bites even a single person. A Labrador cannot kill a pit bull. What I've seen today is my, the first time in my life for 66 years to see something like that. When you are a man of destiny, things that you live, they are called wonders. They are called wonders. They are called wonders because people will look at you and say, is it what happened? Yes, it happened because the devil tried to stop a man of destiny. The level of your position will call upon the level of your position. Higher will be your position. Higher will be your position. Am I talking to somebody? Higher, the devil will rise to catch you. Higher, God will take you for you to avoid the devil. That's why he says he will take us higher. I want to tell somebody, your destiny is not in lower level. Your destiny is in the higher. I was saying higher, no. I was saying very higher. No, I was saying very, I, I was saying your destiny is in a very, very higher places. Where the devil cannot reach. Why? Because the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, I was saved and raised up with Christ and put in heavenly places on a joint city with Jesus Christ. Where I am, the devil cannot touch me. He 
if you want to touch me, you must be able to touch Jesus first. Why? Because he's under my feet. The only thing he can know about me. He can only read the size of my shoes. Now, the doctor who operated on me to do this formal amputation, the following morning he came to my room and he wanted to be child. Then he's like, Jason, can you really tell me, Dr. Kauti, can you really tell me that your hand was in the mouth of this? Yes. Then he says, but there's something I don't understand. Maybe the brother would understand. If my hand is in the mouth of the pit bull and I pull it out, which finger should be cut? The longest. But my longest finger is still present. The finger that was cut in medicine, in legal medicine, it is called the useless finger. It is called the useless finger. Why? Because we don't use it. This is the pain. If I want to write, I'm going to use this three fingers here. But if this finger was cut, I would have lost 50% of the functionality of my hand. I would have been declared disabled. <laughs> now, when he looks at me, he says, Jesse, you are lucky. I said, no, I'm not lucky. I am the child of the Most High God, sitting with him in heavenly places where the destroyer of destinies cannot reach you. Yeah. Now God told me, Jesse, Jean-Claude, every time that the devil would attack you, he will take from you what is useless. Because what is useful, I will keep it for me. Yeah. That's why you see, this finger is not this one. On this side, at least, there is my ring, my covenant with my wife. This one does do nothing. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. If somebody is here telling you that the devil has been attacking you, I will tell you, God is keeping the useful stuff. Yes. All the devil will take will be the useless one. Yes. Can you clap your hand for Jesus? Yes. Now, 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 you know, destiny or faith or providence or predestination. I was still just uh, greeting you. Both suggest that the future has been decided or planned by God. Now, because our destiny is God's purpose for our lives, it is our God-ordained future. Simply, destiny is what God has decided, planned, as to become in His will and His wisdom. And you know what? His will. It's been revealed since the beginning. From the beginning, God created a man and a woman. And what did he say? You shall have dominion. You shall have what? Dominion. God never created you to be under dominion. God has created us. Our destiny is a destiny of dominion. Somebody didn't understand me. A destiny of dominion. That's why Psalm 82 verse 6 even says that I've made you God. But I love it. I love it in the message version. The message version says deputy God. I've made you deputy. I've appointed you deputy God. You know what does a deputy does? A deputy receives all his delegation of power by the one who is on the throne. Yeah. Meaning the president gives all the authorities authority to his deputy president. The chairman gives his authority to his deputy chairman. You and I, we have been appointed not to be only kings because he's the king of kings but he has made us deputies himself. Yeah. I say he has made us to be deputies of himself. Meaning what he does, we shall also do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now because I know that, then I know that nobody can stop my destiny to be fulfilled. Because destiny 
It's about destination. Yeah. And yesterday, Pastor Roger was speaking to us about being predestined. Predestined or the predestination. Saying that it's a destination that God has already decided on for us before even we go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I read in my Bible. One day Jesus was ministering and he finishes ministering, he tells his disciples, let's go to the other side. I read in my Bible, somewhere in Mark chapter 4. He said, let's go to the other side. Jesus left with them. And when they went in the boat, the Bible says that he was deeply asleep. And there was a storm in the middle of their destination. That means storms never been something strange in your way of destination or in your destiny. That is somebody should not say, I've been called by God to be a powerful man of God. I've been called by God. God says I will be a great powerful singer, but I have problems. Problems actually confirm your calling. Problems actually come to confirm that you have a God who can solve the problems. Because there is a devil somewhere fighting your destiny because he knows that you have to reach somewhere and he doesn't want you to reach your destination. Now Jesus was there. What is strange for you to be found to find yourself under storms if it happened to the disciples while Jesus was with them? But I know something or two things or three things. Number one, there was a message before they go. The master said, Let's cross over to the other side. In every destiny, you have to have the word of your destiny. What did he tell you? I know my, my wife has a ministry that we call Rebecca, and she likes, she, she takes care of the young women, the young ladies. Many of them want to come and get advice from her. And when somebody wants to get married, the first question she asks them is, have you received a word from God? Because when you'll be in the middle of your destination and wind comes to blow, only one thing responds against the blow. It's the word of God. You cannot say something that God never told you. If he never told you, you'll deny that. I've never told you to be in that place. But here God says, let's go. And the Bible says they went under many boats. Yeah. But when they came, they arrived in the middle, the Bible doesn't speak about other boats. I don't know if other boats sink. I don't know. But they sink only, they speak only about the boat of Jesus. The second message there, Jesus was calm. Jesus was calm. Jesus was the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 5, in your calmness, you will find strength. In your road to your destination, there might be turbulence. But if you have received the word from God, you'll be calm. That's why when, when Jesus woke up, he was not happy at all. He says, men of no faith. Why did you wake me up? He was just telling them, I, I already spoke. You could have just spoken to the wind to say, the master said we go oh, to yes. the other side. Amen. 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 Number three, I know that there was a devil who wanted to stop the destination, but the destination never been stopped. In your road to destiny, make sure that you have a partner. And if there's one partner who will never leave you, Jesus. Amen. Have Jesus in your boat. You might have other friends. These are the people I call friends of destiny. In our boat, we are together. But we make sure that Jesus is with us. I'll be in the boat with Pastor Makai. I'll be in the boat with Pastor Bayanga. But we make sure that Jesus is with us. Because so sometimes... We might start to rub our shoulder and say, oh, things are not going well. Things are not going. And Jesus will say, stop it. I've told you it is well. Amen. Have partners of destiny 
but have Jesus in that. You know why? Because Jesus never fail. You will never fail him. I've heard, I've heard it. You, you were singing, you were singing here. He never disappointed. Joshua chapter twenty-one, verse forty-five says, "Not one of all the Lord's good promise to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. If He gave you a word, if He gave you a word, I repeat, if He gave you a word, He will fulfill it. And for them it was, I said." Let's cross over. No matter how happen, BBBC or uh, Burning Bush Bible Church, God said 2023 is the year of excellence. No matter what happened, because he has spoken, you shall reap your excellence. He has spoken. He said your destiny shall never be killed. Nobody will kill it. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 says, God is faithful. He is faithful. Amen. By whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God says he called you in the fellowship with whom? His son, Jesus Christ. I am a fellow of Jesus Christ. A fellow meaning we are in communion and partnership together. Now the Bible says that God is faithful. He is what? Well, he is faithful. Being faithful meaning not only that he's trustworthy, but it means also that you can put your full faith on him because he is faithful. You can put your full faith without dividing it. When he said that let's grow to the other side, don't look left and right because nothing will happen. There are many things that can destroy our destiny. I'm not talking about that. There's somebody who talk about that. Can you choose your destiny? No, you can't. You have to discover your destiny. And once you discover it, I like something that Pastor Makari said yesterday. You discover it. You possess it and you recover it if it's happened that you have lost it. You discover it. You possess it. Meaning you grab it because it's my destiny. But how now to discover it? There was a question that I wanted to answer before that. But thought of, I don't have time to ask. I wanted to speak about why am I sure that my destiny will never be healed. But I don't have time for that. Let's keep it and go to the task that has been allocated to me this night, this evening, to say how can you discover your destiny? Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, discover. discover. Tell your neighbor, discover. discover. Tell him, discover. discover. You have to discover your destiny. Many ways. But I'm going to give you five points here. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. For people who are writing Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Let me put you in the context of Hebrews chapter 10. Here Jesus is speaking about Jesus. When God had to send a solution to the humankind sinful life. He was looking for a solution. Everything that he tried was not working perfectly. Until now, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, the Bible says, and it, it, is, it reads as follows. Then I said, who said? Jesus. Then I said, he said what? Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have to come to do your will, O God. Let me repeat. Jesus said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll or in the book or in the Bible or in the law. It is written about me. I have come to do your will, O God. Key number one, to discover your destiny. I'm going to tell you your destiny is found in the book. I repeat, your destiny is found in the book. 
Your destiny is found in the scroll. Your destiny is found in the scroll. And you know a scroll, you have to open it. You open it. You haven't found it yet. You continue to open. Your destiny is found in the book. If you throw away the book, you throw away your destiny. If you neglect the book, you neglect your destiny. What is written about you in the book of life, in the book of everyone's destiny, do you know about it? Have you found it? I said the destiny is found in the book. But the difference now is here between the Logos and the Rema. Because the Logos is the written letter seen by all. But the Logos is the revealed word by the Spirit. The Rema is the revealed word by the Spirit that speaks to yourself. That is the word that you have been reading every time until one day the Holy Spirit opens your eyes and you say, Eureka, I found it. My eyes are open. The Rema. The Rema. That's why the Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You have to find the Spirit behind the written word, what that is addressed to you. I will be the head and not the, the, the tail. It will just be a written word. And you just say it because it's written. Is it a rema? And you found something in that. Hallelujah. Why is it written? But it's still hidden. It's because Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2 says, The glory of God is what? To conceal a matter. The glory of God is what? To conceal or to hide a matter. And what is your glory? As a king, is to reveal it, to find it, to search it. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. And remember I told you, you are not only a king, but you are a deputy to God. What is written about me in this scroll? If I found what is written about me in this scroll, the Bible says I will be the head and not the tail. I am blessed and not cursed. I have the Zoe life, the life of God. My life is full of power, not weaknesses. The life of God is in me, not a sick life. The way you speak about things that you know about yourself will determine and tell us what you know about yourself. Yeah. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? Up and down. You see yourself. How are you? Good day, bad day. Hallelujah. But your destiny never been about good day and bad day. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. He said, I know. Not that I, I, I've heard that somebody knows about the plans. But God says, me, God, I know the plans. And he said, plans for you to have future. Better future and hope. Not plans of from sick of sorrow. Up and down. But plenty of saying, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm super well. Yeah. Because God said, He knows the plans He has for me. People of God, search the word of God to discover your place yeah. and to discover your real position. You know, the Bible says, Psalm 119, verse 105, what? The, your word is what? A lamp to my feet. A lamp to my feet. The lamp to my feet is like a lamp of my phone that I can touch my feet so that I know where I'm putting my feet because on my destination there might be pits. But the word says again, it is the light to my path. Now, it's not only the lamp to my feet to show me so that I don't start come and stumble on a, 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 a stone somewhere or my foot goes somewhere down, but it also clarifies very much. That's why the word of God, you have to use it for that. Yeah. God, tell me where I am now and tell me where I will be tomorrow. Yeah. Because your destination is not about only tomorrow. It's from now to tomorrow. Yeah. Now you have to have the light that clarifies you from where you're walking yeah. to where you're going. Yeah. And the word of God gives that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, the Bible says it's the lamp to my feet. The light to my path. 
to my road, to my route, to my destination. That's why when you drive at night, you need to bring your lights not from 50 to 100. Because it's that day you want to see far. Amen. Uh, amen. So that you are not surprised by something that arrived immediately to you. The word of God will prevent you. Amen. <laughs> Seek for the word of God. In Luke chapter 22, verse 27, Jesus said, before he goes to die on the cross, he says, it is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. And he said, yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. My question to you now is it and to me. What is written about me? What is written about me? If you read, if, do you read the Psalms? When you read the Psalms, after two chapters, three chapters, four chapters, you will find somewhere it's written pause. In Hebrew it says Selah. You know what is it? It says, after you have read, you have to pause and start to reflect. Yeah. I call it, this is meditation. Yeah. Meditation is about staying there until you find the light that will take you further. Yeah. 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 That's why God says to Joshua, let this book of destiny remain in you. You have to meditate it. Your destiny, if you want to know about your destiny, is not about reading the book. It's about pausing, seller, meditating, and see far. Can I explain to you something? Yeah. It's people who meditate who will discover the things that are hidden. Yeah. 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 Listen to me. Your, the point that, that connects your present to your future is called meditation. Yeah. Amen. 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 There were a lot of them. Jesus was resurrected. And a woman was with them. The Bible says in John chapter 20, there were disciples running to the tomb. The first one who arrived, he looked inside. Jesus was not there. He turned. Peter arrived. He looked inside. And he went in. Jesus was not there. He turned. And the Bible says they left. But Mary remained there. Read your Bible. She went down. She stayed. She started to look. Things that Peter never saw. Never saw. And Peter was an apostle. The Bible says she saw two people. One on the head where Jesus was. Another one on the feet. And then she questioned them. Where have you put my master's The Bible says Jesus appeared to her by the bed. And she didn't know that it was Jesus. Then she turned. She thought that it was the gardener. And they said, Sir, you are the one who took my master. Where have you put her? This is called meditation. Questioning and staying. And Jesus responded to Mary by saying, Mary, he called Mary by her name. And the Bible says Mary's eyes were immediately opened. And she realized that it was Jesus. And she said, she said to me, to Master, listen to me. Meditation will make you discover the wonders that other people never discover. Your destiny is found in the book. But you have not to read a book, but to meditate. You 
you have to know your gifting. If you know your ability, you know what will happen? When you know your ability, you will be one day called by Jesus and says, good and faithful servant. Enter in the joy of your master. This is your destiny. But Jesus gave it to him. To him. I'm taking you to the parable of talents. There were three. One, five talents. The other one, two talents. And the last one, one talent. The first one, develop the talents. Multiply them from five to ten. The second one, multiply the two to four. The one with the one kept it some. Said, I'm going to give to my master what he did to me. God never gave you abilities for you to keep them for yourself. He gave you abilities for you to develop them. You are able to take pictures. You must not learn to film. You are able to sing. You must not learn to go to the studio and make albums. You are able to preach. You must not be learning to teach God. Because God wants you to develop your ability. And God says, good and faithful servant. Who is faithful? God is faithful. But Jesus makes you faithful like him because you have been the one who discovered, who multiplied your abilities. And you have discovered why God wants to take you. Then he says, come and enter in the joy of your ministry. Actually, you have found your destiny by multiplying your abilities. Yeah. Now somebody will say, Pastor, but this is about money. Yes, I know the power of talent is about money. And he told the last one, the one with multiply this. He called, how did he treat him? He said, wicked and lazy servant. Wicked and lazy servant. Why? Because you never discover your abilities. You never use what I've given you as talent or abilities. What is your ability? What are your abilities? What are your gifts? There's a young boy, his name is David. He was still 16, 17. But he knew how to sing. And one day they were looking for somebody who had been now an announcing of singing and a whole day an evil spirit were living. It was not only about singing. Because David decided that he knew how to sing. This young boy learned to spend time with the sheep of their bed. And when he was alone with the sheep, he learned a lot of lessons of life. He learned how to trust God. He learned how to depend on God. Now he was more than a singer. He became an anointed singer. Yeah. Yeah. The gifts have been given to you. Add on the anointing of God. Yeah. Use the gift of God in the house of God to make miracles and wonders. Yeah. And you're going to see what God will do with you. Yeah. Why? Because one day the king will be looking for something. Because you know what? God creates, creates always pretext to bring you in the context of the text. God creates always pretexts to bring you in the context of the text. And the pretext was an evil spirit is coming to the king. What will you do? We have to get somebody who is announcing come to see. Who is he? Let's go and find David. He's beautiful, this young boy. His skin is very, you know, he's okay. Let's bring him. But God is taking David to the mansion, to the kingdom palace for him to learn about royalty because he is a royal person. God has already destined you to royalty but he will take you to the place of royalty for you to learn the things that will apply to more. Don't neglect the ability and the gifting that God has given you. It will take you to the palace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. To the point that the day David killed Goliath the same king forgot about David. He got Abner. Abner, come here. Tell me, whose son is that boy? Whose son? Who's, who is the father of this boy that I see fighting like this? Why? Because he knows I've seen in this boy qualities of him becoming royal. But in truth, can only be a king a prince, meaning a child born from a king, and growing up in the palace. 
But God has brought David as young as he was to the palace. Not for him to be the king first, but for him to see things that happen in the kingship. And to start to smell the kingship. God was actually chasing out of David the smell of sheep from outside the bench. Bringing him to the kingship, king palace, giving him the perfume of the king. So that then he was on the field of battle. When he picked this Goliath, the king says, mm -mm, this one, I have to know his father. They're going to look for your father because of the gifting that you have. And the father that you have, the father in heaven is the one who gave me those gifts. Number two, examine your ability and your gift. Number three, quickly. Number three. The service in the house of God will reveal your destiny. The service in the house of God will reveal your destiny. What am I saying? I'm saying serve God. Amen. Serve God. Play the keyboard. The service that you're doing will reveal your destiny. Sing for you. It will reveal your destiny. People behind the cameras, serve God. The service of God will reveal your destiny. Yeah. I've seen young people in protocol left and right serving the Lord. That service will actually reveal your destiny. Pastor give us a one witness. I'm going to give one witness in the Bible. There's a young boy called Samuel. He was born. His name said... His name is Samuel because the mother says, I've requested him from the Lord. And the promise of the mother was the day, boy, a son, I'm going to leave, give him to you. He will serve you. And she fulfilled that. She took Samuel. She went to drop Samuel in the house of God. I don't know what they told the child. And this is now me thinking. The father and the mother come with Samuel to say, Samuel, this is your clothes, this is your luggage, everything in the house we have taken. We come to drop you in the house of God. God told, we promised God that you will serve him in the house. Now, we don't know what God will do with you. Just be there. God will take you. Because some people say to son, what, what will I be doing in the house? Say, just be there. And there's no better position in the house of God than being a deputy or a servant. I repeat. I repeat. To everybody who's here, don't be happy to be called senior pastor if you've never been called assistant pastor. Yeah. Amen. Don't be happy to be called sink leader if you've never been called servant leader or servant senior. You know why? Because the position that you take today, if you have jumped steps, it will catch up to you. Yeah. There are things that you're going to learn from Eli, when he's still alive, mm -hmm. Samuel be in the house. Mm -hmm. And the first thing what happened, Samuel was called by God, mm -hmm. but Samuel never known the word of God, mm -hmm. the voice of God. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1, Samuel was ministering God in the house of the Lord, but without knowing the voice of God. God called him, and Samuel woke up and went immediately, Pastor! Are you calling me, Daddy? And I say, no, it's not me. Go back and sleep. He goes. Number two, listen to me. I'm sure that the high priest knew already that God was calling him. But he wanted him to discover it. Mm -hmm. Exercise in the house of God. Pastor has, has sent me for the first time. He sent me for the second time. He sent me for the third time. We are teaching you to learn to know things that we have known when we walked also like this. Yeah. 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 The third time, the boy came and he told him, next time if you hear the voice, say, God, hear him, speak to me. And he went. So simple like that, is it God talking to me? Really? I've missed two times, three times, already. will he call me again? Yes, God knows that you are still a baby. Because you are learning, God wants to take you to a destiny. But the service in the house of God, even what you will learn now, will take you to become a master. Yeah. The service will take a learner to master it. But you have to be ready to be 
a servant. Because Jesus, for him to have the name above all the names, he accepted to be, to be humble and bring himself down. Are you with me? When he was called, he says, God, hear him speak to me. God started to speak to me. About what? He's speaking to him about what he spoke already to the Father. That the Father knew, but the Father never applied. Huh? This is terrible. The first time I learned to hear you, God, you speak to me about serious things like that. He said, yes, go and tell a lie. The promise that I've done to destroy his family will happen. Because he knew about the sin in his house, but he never corrected it. Listen why it was so difficult. God said, the sin in the house of Eli will not be corrected by sacrifice or an offering. Go and tell him. The boy was, yo, I'm not ready to say this. I'm not sure that he slept at night. I'm sure it was already 3 o'clock in the morning. He started to pray until the morning. And the Bible says in the morning he went to open the door of the house of God. Because that was his job. To open the door, to close it. And the master came. He said, Paul, come, tell me what the Lord spoke to you. And the master said, I warn you, don't lie to me. Because I know what God will teach you. <laughs> the boy spoke. And listen to me. Read the Bible, read well in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And it ends, the last verse. The Bible says it was in a time when the word of God was rare in Israel. Why? Because the priests were, they were sinning. But God chose Samuel, that young boy, to become the prophet who will speak words. And the Bible says none of his words will talk go without being fulfilled. In the time when the word of God was rare, the destiny of Samuel was discovered in serving God. I told you the service will take you from learner to master it. Quickly, number four. I have five of them. Prayer. Say prayer. 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 Say prayer. Prayer. If there are French speaker people here or Congolese people, we say Mahombi ne tombera. Jamais. Prayer. Prayer. Now let me explain to you something about prayer in the destiny. Because God knows the destiny. I think we said, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I know the plan that I have for you. Now that means I can come to him to say, God, because you know the plan, reveal them to me. Now how will you do it? We call it intentional prayer. I say intentional prayer. I come to you, God, with an intention to get an answer. Intentional prayer. God, because you said you know, then reveal it to me. Because Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says you know. But Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great. And what? And hidden things that you don't know. Now, people, let me tell you. I like it in the new international version, NIV. He says, I will tell you Great and unsearchable, 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 unsearchable. Okay, listen now, I'm taking you to the next level of your prayer. Jesus says in Matthew 7 verse 7, ask, seek or search, and knock. Okay, now God says, call to me, I will reveal to you hidden things, unsearchable things. Something that is unsearchable cannot be searched. Because it is unsearchable. That means it cannot be also asked. It can only be received after knocking. Now the knocking doesn't depend on you. The Bible says ask, it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. But knock, they shall open for you. If you knock, you have to wait. For the person who has the responsibility to open it for you, for you to eat. Now, the intentional prayer I'm talking here is that it's not about us. It's not God, God. It's not seeking. It's about knocking. It calls patience. 
patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about power. I'm talking about fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's a prayer that is done by a mature person. Because babies don't discover their destiny. Because babies stop by asking. Sometimes he cries, give me my phone. It's not your phone, it's my phone. I won't give it to you. But the day you learn to knock, if you come to knock the door here, and in the house there is nobody here in the temple, it's only pastor who is in the office. Maybe he won't hear you. You need to knock more and louder and harder. Now when you knock harder, it starts to hurt. Because the asking doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt your nose. The searching doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt your eyes because you search. But when you start to knock, I don't hear. I don't hear. Then I have to deal harder. It's going to hurt. There is a prayer that hurts that leaves you with marks in your body. Jesus prayed to the point that this became blind because it was earthy. I don't even talk it to somebody. There's a level of prayer when you are discover your destiny. When you are on your way to destiny. Before, and it happened when? It happened before Jesus went to the cross. Because Jesus came and his destination on the world, the world, the world was the cross. Some minute before your destiny, you have to get blood in the place of water. Blood in the place of sweat. Because you will have to knock and be patient and wait. Many in the house of God have received the Holy Spirit as a giver of power. They've never received the one who's the giver of the fruit, which is the character of Jesus Christ. You get to your destiny when you are partnering with the fellow. Remember what we written 1 verse 9. God is faithful to whom? By whom he has put you in fellowship with Jesus Christ. Jesus will never fellowship with somebody that doesn't have fruit. The only time that the Holy Spirit came to Jesus as a dove, it was when he came out of the water. Otherwise, in the every time, it was a lie. It was somebody who comes with power. Because the dove is the very most sensitive animal that ever existed. And the dove can only come to a lamb. On a lamb. When I get the character of Jesus Christ, at the level of the Holy Spirit coming from where? From heaven. And receiving the introduction of the master. Not everybody was there. And God introduced Jesus. He said, this is my son. This is my son. Listen to him. When and how? This is the, the, the destiny that I've given to my son. And it is having been revealed after he came out of the water and he was praying intentionally to the level way. King that he was, he accepted to be a lamb that yeah. a dove would come to him. Am I speaking to someone? Did you pray already? You have asked. Did you pray already? We have searched. But you need not to know. To the point that it will be harder, harder until the one inside hears. And the one inside can open or cannot open. It depends. You can know, I hear, but I'm tired. I don't wake up. That's it. It's okay. Sleep outside, I'm open in the morning. I am hurt. But I say I won't open now. Because it still depends on me. Where is the key of the door that will be open for you to enter when you knock? Do you even know which door you should knock? You cannot knock a door of where is members when you need money. When you need money, you knock at the bank. You don't knock. I don't know at the fishery. So the fishery won't give you money. It will give fish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying when you need money, 
you must ask to God who gives money. Yeah. Like money equals money. You're going to give money for you to get money. It will be painful for you to give, but you have to give. Yeah. Yeah. You can fast 21 days and waiting for money to come from heaven. It doesn't come. Amen. If you give, it comes. It will just be enough for you to make it. The next level of your prayer should be no Amen. waiting for you to be prepared. Amen. Number last and finish by the five minutes. I have to finish. I have to finish. Number last. Listen to me. Your destiny will start with an encounter with God. Write it down like this. Your destiny will start with an encounter. Meaning it will be revealed today in the encounter. An encounter is actually an unexpected and casual meeting with someone. I was walking on late streets. I didn't know when I was going until I reached just unexpectedly at number 74. And I read, oh, Burning Bush Bible Church, Days of Glory. And I decided to let me enter here. Unexpected and casual. And when I entered there, I met the God of the place. And that God revealed to me my destiny. I'm speaking about somebody who will have an encounter with God this evening. Because I long for an encounter with God. I say unexpected and casual meeting with him. Jeremiah said something. Chapter 1 verse 4. He said, the word of the Lord came to me. Mm. Listen to me. He said, the, Lord, the word of the Lord did what? Yeah. Came to me. What is the word, the, Lord, the word of the Lord? The word of the Lord is himself God. Mm. He says, it came to me and said to me, since the day you were still in the womb of your mother, I knew you and I've chosen you and I've established you. But verse 6, when the Lord came to him, verse 6, Jeremiah says, Ah, sovereign Lord, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. In your encounter with the Lord, pay attention to come with excuses. When the Lord has spoken to you, you receive what the Lord has said. Because excuses are destiny killers. But God continued by speaking to him. He said, No, 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 Jeremiah, I have decided to change you. The day the Lord comes to you, I'm not saying you going to the Lord, I'm saying the Lord coming to you. Having that, that encounter, you're going to discover your destiny. Pastor, can you tell us something else? Yes, I'm going to tell you. You know all the disciples of Jesus, the 12 of them? Jesus went to them. They were fishermen. They were businessmen. They were also tax collectors. But Jesus went to them and said, leave what you are doing. Come to me. I will make you fishers of men. That means these people were already old, but they were not living in their destiny. They were doing something else until the word came to them. Only the encounter with Jesus will come to reveal you your true destiny. You are happy where you are, but you should have been happier where God wants you to be. Until you long for the destiny for an encounter with the Lord, and then you're gonna discover your true destiny. Amen. What am I saying in my conclusion? I'm saying <coughs> discover your destiny. And if you cannot discover, serve the Lord. Give him an opportunity one day to encounter, to have an encounter with him. One encounter will come and tell you you are not at the right place. Don't live this life, it's not your life. I've called you to be this one. And not that one. That's my prayer for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Pray, 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 pray. Reba, ra, ra, ka, sata. 